In one sense, this statement is but another way of saying that the ideology is a response to strain. But now we are including cultural as well as social and psychological strain. It is a loss of orientation that most directly gives rise to ideological activity and inability for lack of usable models to comprehend the universe of civic rights and responsibilities in which one finds oneself located. The development of a differentiated policy or of greater internal differentiation within such a policy may and commonly does bring with its severe social dislocation and psychological tension. But it is also brings with a conceptual confusion as the established images of political order fade into irrelevance or are driven into disrupture, this, this re, disrepute. The reason why the French Revolution was at least up to its time, the greatest incubator of extremist ideologies, progressive and reactionary alike, in human history was not that either personal insecurity or social disequilibrium were deeper and more pervasive than as at many earlier periods. Though they were deep and pervasive enough, but because the central organizing principle of political life, the divine rights of kings was destroyed. It is a confluence, confluence of socio-psychological strains, strain and an absence of cultural resources by means of which to make sense of the strain, each exacerbating the other that sets the stage for the rise of systematic poli political, moral or economic ideologies. And it is in turn the attempt of ideologies to render otherwise incomprehensible social situations meaningful, to so construe, construe them as to make it possible to act purposefully within them that accounts both, both for ideology's highly figurative nature and for the intensity with which, once accepted, they are held. As metaphor extends language by broadening its semantic range, enabling it to express meaning, it meanings it cannot or at least cannot yet express literally, so the head-on clash of literal meanings of ideology, the, the irony, the hyperbole, the overdrawn antithesis provides novel symbolic frames against which to match the myriad unfamiliar somethings that like a journey to a strange country are produced by transformation in political life. Whatever else ideologies may be projections of unacknowledged, unac unacknowledged unac 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 fears, dis disguises for ulterior motives, pathetic expressions of, of group solidarity, they are almost distinctively maps of problematic social reality and matrices for the creation of collective conscious, conscience. Conscience, whether in any particular case the map is accurate of the, or the conscience creditable, it is, is a separate question to which one can hardly give, give the same answer for Nazism and Z Zionism, for the nationalism of McCarthy and of, of Churchill for the defenders of segregation and its opponents. 6. 
Though ideological ferment is, of course, widespread in modern society, perhaps its most prominent locus at the moment lies in the new or renewed states of Asia, Africa, and some parts of Latin America, for it is in these states, communist or not, that the initial steps away from, from a traditional politics of piety and proverb are just now being taken. The attainment of independence, the overthrow, overthrow of established ruling classes, the popularization of legitimacy, the rationalization of public administration, the rise of modern elites, the spread of literacy and mass communications, and the pop propulsion, propulsion will, willy-nilly of experienced governments into the minds of a precarious international order that even its older participants do not very well understand all make for a perspective, a pervasive sense of disorientation, a disorientation in whose face received images of authority, responsibility and civic purpose seem radically inadequate. The search for a new symbolic framework in terms of which to formulate, think about and react to political problems whether in the forms of nationalism, Marxism, liberalism, populism, racism, Caesarism, ecclesiasti ecclesiasticism, and some variety of restructured traditionalism, or most commonly a confused melange of several of these, is therefore tremendously intense. Intense but in indetermin indeterminate. For the most part, the new stages are still group groping for usable political concepts, not yet grasping them, and the outcome in almost every case, at least in every non-communist case, is uncertain not merely in the sense that the outcome of any histori historical process in is uncertain, but in the sense that even a broad and general as assessment of overall direction is extremely difficult to make. Intellectually, everything is in motion and the words of that aggravan poet in politics, Lamartine, writing of 19th century France, applied to the new states with perhaps even greater, greater appro appropriateness than the did to the dying Julie monarchy, monarchy. These times are times of chaos. Opinions are a scramble. Parties are a jumble. The language of new, new ideas has not been created. Nothing is more difficult than to give a good definition of oneself in religion, in philosophy, in politics. One feels, one knows, one lives and at need, one dies for one's cause, cow, cause, but one cannot name it. It is the problem of this time to classify things and men. The world has jump, jumbled into it, the world has jumbled its catalog. This observation is not true anywhere in the world right now. 1964. Then it is in Indonesia, where the whole polit political process is mired in a slog of ideological symbols, each attempting and so far each failing to jumble the republic's catalog, to name its cause and to give point and purpose to its policy. Polity. It is a country of false starts and frantic, frantic revisions of a desperate search for a political order whose image, like a mir mirage, recedes more rapidly and the more eagerly it is approached.
the Selvin, the Selvin slogan amid all this frustration is the revolution is unfinished and so indeed it is but only because no one knows not even those who cry almost cry, cry most lou loudly that they do precisely how to go about the job of finishing it the most highly developed concept of government is in traditional Indonesia where those upon which the classic Hindu Hinduist states of the 4th or 15th, 15th century were built, concepts that persisted in somewhat re revised the weakened form even after these states were feared Islamized and then largely replaced or overlaid by the Dutch colonial regime. And of these concepts, the most important was what might be called the theory of the exemplary center, the notion that the capital city, or more accurately, the king's place, had, has at once a microcosm of the supernatural order, an image of the universe on a smaller scale, and the material embod embodiment of political order. The capital was not merely the nucleus, the, en the engine, or the pi pivot of the state. It was the state. It was the state. In the Hindu period, the king's class comprehend virtually the entire town, a square of heavenly city constructed according to the ideas of Indic metaphysics. It was more than a locus of power. It was a synaptic paradigm of the ontological shape of existence. At its, cent at its center was the divine king, an incarnation of an Indian deity, his throne symbolizing Mount Meru, seed of the gods, the buildings, roads, city walls and even ceremonially his wives and personal staff were deployed quadrangularly around him according to the directions of the four sacred winds. Not only the king himself but his ritual, his regali regalia, his court and his castle were shot through with charismatic significance. The castle and the life of the castle were the quiddity of the kingdom and, and he who often after meditating in the wilderness to attain the appropriate spiritual status captured the castle captured the whole empire grasped the charisma of office and displaced the no longer sacred king the early policies were thus not, not so much solidary, solidary territorial units and loose con congeries or villages, or villages oriented towards a common urban center and each such center competing with others for, ascend for ascendancy. Whatever degree of regional or at moments inter-regional hegemony prevailed the dependent not on the systematic administrative organization of extensive territory under a single king, but on the var varying abilities of kings to mobilize and apply, apply effective string of forces with which so sack rival cap capitals abilities that were believed to rest on essentially religious, that is, mystical grounds. So far as the pattern was territorial at all, it consisted of a series of concentric circles of religious military power spreading out around the various city-states capitals and radio waves spread from a transmitter. The closer a village to a town, the greater the impact economically and culturally of the core on that village 
and conversive, conversively, the greater the, develop, the de development of the court, priests, artisans, artisans, nobles, and kings, the greater is out, its authenticity as an epitome, epitome of cosmic order, its military strength, and the effective range of its circles of outward spreading power. Spiritual excellence and political eminence were fused. Magical power and executive influence flowed in a single stream, stream outward and downward for the, from the king through the descending ranks of his, of his staff and whether lesser courts were subordinate to him, draining out finally into the spiritually and politically residual peasant mass. There was a facsimile concept of political organization, one in which the reflection of the supernatural order microscopically mirrored in the life of the capital was in turn further and more faintly reflected in the countryside as a whole, producing a hierarchy of less and less faithful copies of an eternal transcendent realm. In such a system, the administrative, military, and ceremonial organization of the court orders the world around it ironically by providing it with a tangible parangon. When Islam came, the Hindu political tradition was to some extent weakened, especially in the coastal trade kingdoms surrounding the Java Sea. The core culture nevertheless persisted, although it was overlaid and interfused with Islamic symbols and ideas and set among an ethnically more differentiated urban mass, which looked with less away of the classical order. The steady growth especially on Java, of Dutch administrative control in the, the mid-19th and early 20th centuries constricted the tradition still further. But since the lower levels of the bureaucracy continued to be managed almost entirely by Indonesians of the old upper classes, the tradition remained, even then, the matrix of super supra-village supra political order. The regency of the district office remained not merely at the axis of the polity, but the embodiment of it, of it, but the embodiment of it, a policy with respect to which most villagers, villagers were not so much actors as audience. It was this tradition with which the new elite, elite, elite of Republican Indonesia was left after the revolution. That is not to say that the theory of the extra ex exemplary center persisted unchanged, drifting like some platonic ar archetype through the eternity of Indonesian history. For like the, so the society as a whole, it evolved and developed, becoming ultimately, ult ultimately perhaps more conventional and less religious in general temper. Nor does it mean that foreign ideas from European parliamentarism, from Marxism, from Islamic moralism, and so far did not come to play an essential role in, in Indonesian political thought, for modern Indonesian national, nationalism is very far from being merely old wine in a new bottle. It is simply that, as yet, the conceptual tradition from the classic image of a polity as a concentrated center of pomp and power, alter, alternately, Prov providing a sinosure for popular ill and lashing out militarily at competing centers to one of a polity as a systematically orientated 
organized national community as for all these changes and influences still not being complete, completed. Indeed, it was being arrested and to some extent reversed.